Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I am bringing you what I'm calling my last minute Mother's Day box. Um, it's not last minute in terms of me making it last minute for my mum. I have already got her gift and it is gift wrapped or boxed anyway, which you will get next week. Um, this is more a case of you have a present but you're not sure how to wrap it, how to decorate it and I'm using products that I have to hand so you know I'm not buying anything extra, these are products that I've had they're all from the annual catalogue which we will be saying goodbye to very soon so if you do like these products you need to get them before they all go um, I've used the beautiful Berry Burst metallic edged ribbon um, Silver Baker's Twine, um, Falling Flowers is the stamp set that I've used um, to stamp the big floral design on the top and then this flower on the tag and then I've used the coordinating framelits, Mayflower framelits um, to cut the beautiful large flower out and then the white centre. Um, I'm not saying that um, these will retire at all but Berry Burst certainly will because that's an in colour from two years ago so it will be retiring and we'll get something new and exciting in its place so this ribbon will be going as will the colour, card, ink etc. But as I said this was more a case of showing you um, you know just making something that you have to hand which is always card, maybe a bit of ribbon or some embellishments but you can always pick something um, so yeah I'm going to show you how to make it. So to start off with you are going to need um, a sheet of Whisper White for the base of the box and this is 8 inches by 8 inches or 20 by 20 centimetres and then you will need some coloured card and mine is Fresh Fig and this is 8 by 7 inches or 20 by 18 centimetres so we'll do the base first with the Whisper White and we are simply going to score on the long side at I've written my notes down and they're just not making sense to me today I don't know what's going on so on one of the sides it doesn't matter which side because they are both the same we are simply going to score at two and six inches which will be five and fifteen centimeters we're then going to rotate I'm rotating mine clockwise but it doesn't matter which way because they will both be the same and then we're going to score again at three and five which will be seven and a half and twelve and a half centimeters. I'm going to move this out of the way for the time being because what I want to do is I'm going to fold um, and burnish my score lines on this one. Do my base and then my glue can be adhering whilst I do the rest. So you've got literally a grid going on here and then what you need to do is just cut these small squares in the centre. So we're just going to cut down to that score line and then we're just going to cut a bit of a wedge out of it. So cut down, cut your wedge. Okay. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. So cut down and cut your wedges out. Okay, so we have that. And then we're going to add our adhesive. Now I've quite simply used some um, snail on this. And again, it doesn't matter which way you do this because it will all be the same. But I'm putting some on my tab and then some on one of my longer panels. So plenty of adhesive on there. So the first thing I'm going to do is adhere my tab to my already one with adhesive on. So I'm literally just going to make sure that that sits quite neatly into that bit there into that fold so that when this folds over that is sitting nice and straight and then this one will go over the top and we'll do exactly the same there. So you have that box and then we're going to do exactly the same this side so my adhesive 
side in first, tuck it into the fold and then my tab and then exactly the same this side, make sure it all lines up nicely and there is my base and that's the base of my box all done and ready to fill with goodies. So my lid I want to stamp first so I have that beautiful floral design and I'm going with tone on tone so I have my fresh fig um, ink pad here too and then I'm just simply popping this lovely swirl on all randomly whichever way you want to go with yours and just cover the the cardstock with your pattern whichever one you're going with there we have that one just give that a clean put that away for a moment so I've got my cardstock now stamped and so now I want to score it so remember we had um, a 7 by an 8 inch piece so you then need some um, cardstock for a shim so I'm using the fresh fig and on the long side which is the 8 inch we're going to score at 2 and 6 inches again which is 5 and 15 then rotate doesn't matter which way and then we're going to score at two and a half and four and a half which is six and a half and eleven and a half centimeters move all this out of the way and then just as we did with the previous one with the base we're just going to fold and burnish all of those score lines and then we're going to cut again exactly the same a nice clean cut up the sides there cut a little wedge out and again the other side cut up there a little wedge and then cut up that one with another wedge and one away, thank you very much. Okay, and then again, back in, I'm just going to use some snail again, and I'm just repeating what I did with the lid, but with the base, sorry. And then we're just going to do exactly the same, so adhesive side. Let me try this side, it might work better. It sort of makes me all fiddly, this does. So the adhesive side tucks in and we pop this over the top and then we do exactly the same with this one over the top there. And then again, repeat it with the other side. Line it all up nicely. There we go. So you've got two sides now that have joins and they will go at the back but before we add that I want to add my ribbon wherever it's gone, here it is. So I'm going with the Whisper White and Silver Metallic Edge for this one and so I'm measuring it so that my ribbon goes right the way to the top of the lid, helps if you have a fairly square end. So I'm just measuring now all the way around to the top of my lid which is about there and then my old faithful tear and tape that I love so much for adhering ribbon and I'm literally just going to run the full length of the ribbon trying to keep a straight line which is always easier said than done that didn't go too badly actually quite pleased with that one and then I just need to take 
the backing off. Now I'm not going to take it all the way off because I need to start by putting it in the centre of the inside of my lid. I don't know if you can see, that's a bit better. So I've just stuck it down to the inside of my lid and then I'm just literally going to work my way around the box, pulling enough tape for the length of the area that I'm sticking. That tape didn't go very straight, that's why it's got a curve in it. And then all the way over the top and then again down the side and then the last piece will tuck over and inside. I'm not too concerned about that little excess bit there because it won't affect the box closing. So that's my tear and uh, my tear and tape, my ribbon that's gone round the top and then I need to do a pretty bow and I don't know about you but I can always tie a bow a lot prettier when it's not on something. I don't know why but it just seems to work so much better. There we go. So that's my ribbon there. So I'm actually going to pop my box onto the base now just because it's easier for me to do this with because it just gives it some strength. There we go. So there's your box fitting nicely. And then just going to grab a glue dot to pop that bow on, which I think sits beautifully like that. And then I have my Whisper White and my Fresh Fig. So my Fresh Fig is for that image. I then have my flower and my die cut. Oh, heavens! That just went everywhere and thankfully that's where it landed. And that will wipe off easily so I'm not worried. I don't know what that is though on my ink pad. Let me just get that off with a bit of cardstock. Get off, thank you. Right, at least it didn't go on here or my project, so that's a bonus. So that's my image stamped there. In fact, I'm just going to move that out of the way because I know otherwise I'm going to get it everywhere. So I'm just going to bring in my big shot. Let's just pull these out of the way. So I'm just literally going to pop that one on there and then I need to line this one up just like that and then I'm going to run this through and I'll take this one out I'm not touching that yet you'll notice because I need another one of those. So again, because I want to give that a double run through, I may as well run back through with the other die cut as well. So we'll get these out of the way. Move this. And then so I'll get rid of that. And this piece, as you noticed, I didn't stamp on it is to put on the back of your, so you've got somewhere to write on the back of your label. So put all those there. Just gonna grab my wonderful dye brush that I just love, because this makes this part so quick and easy. There we go. Three pieces that didn't come out. Look at that. How fabulously quick was that? I just love my dye brush. Truly love it. Okay, so. That's that bit. So all I need to do now is adhere my flower onto my large die cut. And then when you're sticking this one down, you're going to have to stick it with the reverse. So if you can see it's got, oh my camera doesn't like zooming, there's a very slight lip here from where you've die cut it. Um, and that is unfortunately going to have to be the front so you're going to have to put your adhesive on the good side because otherwise they won't line up and then you just need to 
line it up and that is stuck on the back so I can now write a little sentiment on there. I have some silver um, baker's twine here which I'm just putting together and then just popping it through one of the little flowers or the leaves or petals and pull it up so that it's tied on there and then actually to tie this on it's really not very technical at all I simply put my flower where I wanted it to be my label and then I just wrapped it <coughs> around my ribbon and then just tied the knot You could stick it under this bit if you wanted to whilst you were doing it, but I've literally just tied it round that ribbon. Called it tightish because don't forget you're tying it, cutting it, tying it round a glue dot actually. And then I've just trimmed those ends really close, and actually it works perfectly. It's perhaps just a touch long, but I'm not too concerned, as I have my Mother's Day gift anyway. Oops, but there they are, my last minute Mother's Day boxes. I hope you like them and I hope it's helped you out of a fix for your mother. Have a great week and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye. <laughs>